What? What am I? Martha Stewart? Too high, too low. Move it left, move it right. I say stuff is. Helping out in this old home, hanging pictures with a nail gun. Good morning, West Side. Glad you're here today. I'm Dan Sutherland, one of the pastors here. Whether you're joining us at Lenexa in the main room or over in the venue, we got some folks over there today, up at Speedway or at Lansing or on the internet. We're thrilled that you're part of what God is doing at West Side. I want to brag on you guys for just a moment. There's been an awesome, awesome thing that has been happening in the generosity level of this church in the last months. We have just finished the four biggest first months of a year, the best January to April we've ever had as a church in our giving. And I want to say, go God and go church. How about that? I'm impressed, guys. I really am. And last month, I shared that same kind of news with you and talked about the fact that when we give that way, we're able to do more together, and that's true. But I want to talk about the flip side as well. It's not just about what we can do outside ourselves when we give. It's also about how God shows up in our individual lives. You cannot outgive God, but it is kind of fun to try. And I'm praying and believing that his blessings are showing up in your life as you give. Does that mean life will be perfect if you give? No, because you're still a sinner, you're married to a bigger one, and you're birthing even bigger ones than that. <laughs> but it does mean that God shows up, and I am grateful for your giving and so blessed to be part of what God is doing here. We're in the third week of a series called This Old Home. Grab your notes and wave them at me. We are note takers here. I encourage you to write some things down. The idea of this old home is that the drift in family is usually downward. If you're not careful, you slip into old habits. If, if you're not paying attention, you go back to old attitudes, old patterns of treating people. And what we're saying in this series is that God wants to renew our home. He wants to renew us in that setting. And that's the idea. If you'll notice, the big idea for the series is God wants to build our homes into a display case for his love and grace. Would you write that in? God wants to build our homes into a display case. He wants to use us to show our neighbors, our friends, our community, our world, the difference that Jesus makes in a life. Because if Jesus makes a difference in my life and the lives of the others that I live with, the home is a different place. This week we're talking about honor. The saying is there's no honor among thieves. That makes sense to me. If you're hanging out with thieves, you know they steal, you know they've got no values, you know their motto in life is what's yours is mine. And it makes sense to have no honor there. But sadly, in 21st century America, I think you could equally say there's no honor among the family. We've gotten to the place where we treat the neighbor's kids better than we treat ours. We don't honor them. We've gotten to the place where we speak kinder and more gently to the people at work than we do to our mates. We've gotten to the place where we will take care of folks older than we are at the convenience store, at the restaurant, sometimes more quickly than we care for our own parents. We've got to get honor back. It's a big deal to God. In fact, it made his original top ten list we're going to look today at what Scripture says. So here's the big idea for today's teaching. Honor begins at home and is to be practiced by all. It's a two-way street. It's not just one way. It's a two-way street. Some of you parents are going, "Woohoo! he's going to tell my kids to honor their parents. Yes, I am. But we're also going to see that the Scripture teaches that parents are to honor their kids, that honor is to be practiced by all. 
Look at what Jesus said, one passage and then one from Paul as well. Jesus said, if you put yourself above others, you will be put down. But if you humble yourself, you will be honored. And then Paul in Ephesians 6, we've been studying Ephesians 5 and 6 for this series, writes these words, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then notice the quotation marks. The quotation marks are there because Paul is quoting Exodus 20. He's quoting the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and your mother. There's the quote, which is the first commandment with a promise. Let me stop. What in the world is that about? If you read the Ten Commandments, only one of them has an immediate promise. And it is the commandment about honor. Honor your father and your mother. That's the first one with a promise. And then the promise is quoted as well. So that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. It seems like to me we're in a bit of a mess on this subject of honor. Two observations I would begin with. Two generations ago, we taught our kids to honor and obey their parents. We taught it. We taught it across society. I would not even have considered dishonoring my parents or my grandparents when I was way little. It was too much fear. I mean, I knew what would happen if I spoke badly. I knew what would happen. And I'm not suggesting we return to a fear-driven model. But I am suggesting the mess we're in is not any better. We have shifted gears with our kids and their kids with theirs. And here's what we've done. Today, we've made our kids into idols, and we spoil them. We've sung, swung so far the other way that we don't teach on and respect. We teach you whine long enough, we'll give you what you want. You complain long enough, we'll give in. The motto we have followed is, we want our kids to have it better than we did. My motto is now, I don't want them to have what I had. I want them to have to work for what I had. I would like them to have to experience what I have had to experience. We have shifted gears, and in the process, I think we've spoiled a whole generation. Now, if you're young today and you're sitting here saying, he called us spoiled, let me be sure about where I'm pointing the fingers. Everybody watch. When we point at our kids and say they're spoiled, that's not a kid problem. That's a parenting problem. Every kid will be spoiled if allowed to be. Every kid will show disrespect and dishonor if it's not taught and it's not modeled. It comes back to us. So all the kids in the room, let's have a little fun. Turn to your parents and say, it's your fault. Go ahead, tell them. It's your fault. If you get in trouble for that, email me, kids. Always love email from kids. How do we fix that? How do we fix it? Write it in. we got to teach our kids the concept of honor. We have to teach them honor, and it begins at home. Now, we read a passage from Ephesians 6 that said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and your mother. Think about this. Who was Paul speaking to in Ephesians 6? Who was his audience? I would suggest there were two audiences. His announced audience is kids. It says, Children, obey your parents which is right in the Lord, honor your mother and your father. He's speaking to kids. But I would also suggest to you that his real audience was parents. Have you ever done this? I did this last Sunday on Mother's Day. Mary spoke last week, and we hurried home and said, hey, let's still go out for Mother's Day, and called and told Dana, we're coming, let's go out, get ready, get the baby ready. We get to the house, and I'm thinking... You know, it's a little bit about 1230, 1245. The crowd in the restaurant will be better. You know, we can still go out. So we go into the house, and I discover Mary's ready because she's spoken three times that morning. And I'm ready. And, and Justice is ready, our grandson, except for his shoes. But our daughter is not so ready. We'll just leave it at that. So I pick Justice up and put him on my lap and say loudly, Hey, buddy, we got to get your shoes on. We're leaving in five minutes. Who was I talking to? (laughs) Who was I talking to? I mean, my announced audience was the grandson. The real audience is get a move on, daughter. Come on. I believe anytime you read a specific teaching from Scripture, 
There is an announced audience. There's an intended audience, and we got to read the Scripture correctly to know that. But there's also a general principle that applies for all of us. Because you know what? We're all still children. We all still have elders and parents in our life that we are to honor. Now, there's two routes to teaching honor. Write them in. We've probably experienced both. You can demand it. You can demand honor. My parents did. My grandparents did. And they got a lot of honor and respect. But sometimes what they really got was lip service. Scripture says in a couple of places, these people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. Oh, you can, as long as you're bigger than your kids, demand honor and respect. As long as you've got more money than they've got, you can hire discipline done if you have to. But here's the reality. Is it happening in the heart? We don't want to just demand it. We want to model it. And that's the direction we're going with the teaching today. How do you model honor in a home? I want to give you four specific ways. Here's how I invite you to listen. Listen for the one where you need to surrender to Jesus and see that area step up. Don't listen for all four. Listen for one where the Spirit of God just goes, mm, that's the one with our name on it, that's the one with my name on it, in my home. How do we model honor at home? First, we honor your mate. You've got to honor your mate. Why is that a big deal? Listen close. Jesus talks about the husband and wife relationship as modeling the relationship between Jesus and his church. When he talks about family in Ephesians 5, he doesn't start with kids. He starts with husband, wife. What is the point? We have to show honor to our mates. That is where honor starts. Now, some of you are sitting here going, I have an ex-mate. Listen close. Even more careful to show honor. Oh, well, you've probably got more stuff you can talk about. you probably got more hurts you can share. But if you're teaching your kids by how you talk about your mate or your ex-mate, how they're to treat their husband and wives 10 and 15 and 20 years from now, we best be careful that we honor those people. You honor your mate. My son did not get sassy often growing up, but I remember one particular trip to Walmart where he raised his voice and where he got sassy with his mom. And Mary started to correct him, and I just squeezed her hand, which I happened to be holding, and said, Hey, babe, I got this. I'll deal with it when we get home. So we let it go, got to the house, and before we got out of the car, I said, Jared, I want you to go to your room and hang out for a few minutes because I need to talk to you. Now, that always sends a great message. <laughs> and it did. And I walked in, and I said, Son, I need to ask you some questions. Have you ever heard me raise my voice at your mother? And he thought for a minute and said, no, sir, I haven't. And he hasn't, not to this day. Now, he has seen me go out in the yard and scream at the sky <laughs> several times recently. I said, son, have you ever heard me uh, sass your mom? He said, no, sir. I said, so if we were walking down the street, son, and a stranger walked up and yelled at your mom and sassed her, what would I do? He'd say, oh, Dad, you'd get in their face. At this moment, I leaned up one inch from his face <laughs> and very quietly said, are you getting my, my message? And he said, yes, sir, I think I've got it. <laughs> now, did he get it because I had 60 seconds of brilliance as a parent? No! He got it because he'd seen a 13-year model where I didn't yell at his mom. You yell at your spouse, you're teaching your kids to disrespect them. Period. I've heard parents say, you can't yell at your mother when you yelled at the mom five minutes ago. Do you really think they listen to the words instead of the example? Honor starts between husband and wife. Now what that means when you've blown it is you circle the kids up and say, hey, Daddy raised his voice a while ago. We all heard it. Yeah, Daddy was being an idiot, and Daddy's sorry. Now, it's better if Daddy says that than Mama. <laughs> you with me? Mama can't really confess for Daddy. We've got to honor our mates. It begins there. Now, why is that a big deal? Because more is caught than is taught on the issue of honor. 
It's caught, guys. They are paying attention to who we honor and how we honor them. Number two, you need to honor your parents. Honor your parents. Notice the scripture. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right until you're 18 and leave home, and then you can talk bad about them. It's not what it says. Children, obey your parents, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. That commandment has no expiration date on it. And here's a scary thought for those of us who have kids, but also still have parents. Write it in. Your kids are learning how to treat you as you grow older by how you treat your parents. Ouch. My parents have the worst phone call timing of anybody in God's creation. They never call except at a totally bad moment. Thanksgiving this year, we are sitting at the table. All the food is hot. I am carving the turkey and putting it on people's plates. And the phone rings, and it's my dad. Now, he's back in Dallas with my brother and sister-in-law having Thanksgiving, but he can smell turkey from 500 miles away. <laughs> I'm convinced of it. And he calls. And I literally looked at the phone and said, Wow, wow, your grandpa has the worst timing of anybody in the world. And my son, this quick, said, Fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, Dad. <laughs> and I realized in a silly moment, he's learning how to treat me by how I treat my mom and dad. He's paying attention. I'm going to get the honor from him in the long run as I age that I give to my parents as well. Your parents are your parents are your parents. And when it makes God's top ten list, honor your mother and your father, it's a pretty big deal. In fact, Scripture says that those that abandon their family and dishonor their family are worse than infidels. Honor is taught by how we honor our mates. Honor is taught by how we honor our parents. Thirdly, honor is taught by how we honor our kids. By how we honor our kids. You're thinking, wait a minute. Scripture says that honor is from the kid to the parent. Honor is a two-way street. In another passage, Paul says, honor each other. Here's the principle that's absolutely true on honor, on respect, on love, on any other issue with your kids. You cannot expect your kids to practice towards you what you do not practice towards them. You can't. You can't expect them to practice toward you what you don't practice toward them. It's a two-way street. Two weeks ago when I talked about respect, I told a story about sitting in the floor with Justice to play choo-choos. Why? Because his language is choo-choo. And when he pats the floor and says, Papa, points the floor, choo-choo, he's inviting me into his world, and I respect him enough to sit in the floor and play choo-choo. It is ridiculous what we do, but it's pretty fun. Last week, Mary talked about that you love your family by spending time with them, by forgiving them, by encouraging them, by listening to them. What is that doing? It's honoring them. It's teaching the value of you are important to me. Honoring your kids is a huge, huge issue. But number four, and the biggest one of all, we got to honor your God in our homes. We have to honor our God in our homes. I think this is becoming a bit of a lost art. That same Ten Commandment list said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And if you study the whole concept of the Sabbath, what it basically teaches is a twofold idea. That there's a day a week where we gather together to worship God. And then on that same day, we also have rest and relaxation for ourselves. It's both and. Sabbath is a day to worship God and a day to rest. It is both and. And we've been talking the last few months about the church scattered, which is the idea that between Sundays we're out in the world and we're being the church. But the church gathered when we come together on Sunday is equally and vitally important. Why? Because God goes after us if we miss church? No, because it teaches the concept of honoring God. 
we're going to gather together and worship is a message that kids need. My dad did not get some things right growing up, but he really got the Sabbath piece right. He would say to us every Saturday, hey guys, tomorrow we're going to church together and then we're going to have some fun and hang out and relax as a family. We're going to do the worship deal because we honor God and we're going to do the family deal because we honor family. And you never had to ask the question in my house growing up for 18 years whether or not we were going to church. The answer was yes, period. Today, we do different things. Baseball season comes along, and the kids are playing ball, and they have games scheduled on Sunday. And we basically say, okay, kids, we've been going to church for the last eight months, but for the next four, baseball is God. Let's go play ball. Now, is there anything wrong with playing baseball on Sunday? No. But when we leave, thank you. They got it right over there. Can you stay for the next service? But when we leave God out of the picture, the message we've communicated to our kids is God is God, except during baseball season, and then baseball is God. Well, let's not just pick on baseball. Football. <laughs> the Chiefs have finally once again become respectable. Wow. Is that cool? I mean, I can actually mention where I'm from and not hang my head. That's a big deal in football circles, you know? I mean, it's, it's amazing. We got a schedule this year with a couple of Sunday night games and a Monday night game that's called the league, thinks we're going to play well and can draw some viewers. It's a pretty cool thing. But I have folks here that basically say, see ya in August, and we see them after the last playoff game because the Chiefs are on. And God is God, but during football, the Chiefs are chief. Really? Is there anything wrong with going to a football game on Sunday? Of course not. Of course not. But there's a reason we do services Sunday morning and Sunday night. There's a reason that we have folks listening on the internet. There's a reason that the podcast is posted online every week where you can pick it up. What's the reason? So that you can still worship and honor God on the Sabbath. Some of us work it this way. We come to worship except when the in-laws come to town. You don't want to teach your kids that your in-laws are God. <laughs> Do you really want to teach them that? Yeah, we go to church, but when the in-laws come, we don't. Or some of us do this deal. We go to church except when vacation comes, and then we take a vacation from God too. Really? When we were camping in Arkansas as kids, we went to a local church or we had service of our own. God was always in the picture. Now, we skied the rest of the afternoon, and we played hard the rest of the day, but my dad made the point, we honor God in this home. And here's the reason for that. Write this in your notes. All honor is out of sync until we honor God first. All of it's out of sync. Well, you can try to honor your mate, but till God's first, it doesn't work. You can honor your kids till God's first, it doesn't work. You can honor your parents until God's first. It doesn't work. Now, here's a stumbling block. Write it in. Most of us struggle to practice honor toward others because it demands that we first humble ourselves. The world teaches us, get the title, get the thing of honor. The world teaches us, take the best seat at the table. The world teaches us, expect everybody else to honor you. And Jesus turns that upside down when he says, the greatest among you will be the servant of all. And if you want honor in the next life, you gain humility in this one. I'm trying to get to the point where I think about honor as something more to be given away than to be received. Something that I expect to give to others more than I expect to get back from them. Now, I know when we talk about a subject this big, it hits close to home for all of us. Because let's just be honest. All of us have blown the honor thing. Maybe this week, maybe this morning on the way to church. 
If not, you still got going home for another shot. We've dishonored our kids or our maid or our parents or somebody else, or we've dishonored God. And I don't want you to walk out of here with a heavy heart today going, wow, I really have blown this honor thing. No, that is never what the scripture is about. What it's about is the heart of the gospel, which is two words, repent, believe. Repent and believe. If you're not a Christ follower here today, the message to you is simple. Repent of trying to live life on your own. Believe that Jesus died for you and was raised from the dead and can make a difference in your life. Repent and believe. But on the subject of honor, if we've blown it, and I think that's probably an all of us deal, what's the choice? Repent and believe. Lord, what I said this week to my wife was dishonoring. I need to go back and confess that. And I believe you can change me and use me to honor her again. Lord, I've dishonored you and what I've done here. Now, it, it's crazy to talk to the folks that are at a 945 service about dishonoring God with the Sabbath. I get that. But I also know us enough to know that it's easy to fall into. So here's what I want us to do. For about the next 30 seconds, we're just going to have a time of silent prayer. And I'm going to invite you in a moment to bow your head and close your eyes and just go one-on-one -on -one with God. And if during this teaching he's elbowed you and said that's the peace, or he's brought something to memory, just literally repent and believe. Lord, thank you for reminding me where I blew it. I give it back to you. Change me and make me an instrument of your honor. Lord, I have fallen into the habit of talking badly about my wife or my husband. Change it, Lord. Lord, I got one kid driving me nuts, and I've not been honoring him. Help me do that. God, you know my parents are making me crazy. But Lord, help me honor them. And most of all, Lord, I haven't honored you in this part of my life. Today I choose to start. I want to give you 30 seconds just to go one-on-one -on -one with God, and then I'll pray together and we'll finish. Let's bow our heads and pray. Jesus, there have been moments where I've not honored you. And moments where I've not honored my wife, my kids, my parents. And I give those to you right now. I specifically name them to you, Lord. And I repent and I believe. I don't want to do that, Lord. I want you to change my heart and use me as a person to build honor in those that I love. Help me to learn to honor you and those you've given me. This is my prayer in Christ. Amen. I want to give you an assignment as you go, because honor is one of those things that we mean to do, but it kind of slips away from us. So here's the last piece in your notes. Some of you wouldn't have slept tonight if we hadn't finished them. Here they are. The assignment this week is I want to encourage you to write two honor letters this week. Two. Now, what's an honor letter? It's a letter that says, I'm writing you this note to honor you, to tell you what you mean to me and what I appreciate about you, and you fill it in. I encourage you to write one to a family member. It will surprise them. But then to get beyond this to the bigger scope, I want to encourage you to write one to a non-family member because here's a whole other teaching we didn't even touch today. Honor your father and your mother is definitely about family, but it's also about the idea of honoring your spiritual parents some of us have been mentored or coached or influenced by other people outside family and we're to honor them as well so i encourage you this week just say lord who do you want me to honor with this letter okay my wife awesome yeah that uh, that that friend that's older than i am has been a big brother to me i can do that too write them and send them watch god show up in a big way next week we talk about peace the job of everyone in the home